previously on the Mokro Mafia miniseries. An expected shipment of 200 kilos went missing in the port of Antwerp in 2012. Distrust starts to build between the two groups involved, which were Group Martha and Group Benaouf and Hussein. Where is the shipment and who took it? Customs or maybe someone else? As it seems there were no satisfactory answers to this question, repercussions based on assumptions took place. The beef officially started with the hit on Najeb Boubou, Gwinnett Martha's right-hand man in Antwerp. Gwinnett was furious and retaliated in a way that was never seen before in the Netherlands. Even though he was not successful, the tone had been set. After this happened, the feud would only reach lower lows. One of the men involved in what had happened to Najeb Boubou at the Crown Plaza Hotel in Antwerp on the 18th of October 2012 was Rida Benajem. Even with his 1 meter 70 in height, the young Rida is feared in the streets of Amsterdam and deemed as highly unpredictable. He was a hothead and would hit someone for even looking at him the wrong way. He once struck someone in the leg as a warning because they had a small argument. By age 21, he is already tied to several cases, but there was not enough evidence to prosecute him at the time. After the Crown Plaza incident, he is put on the national most wanted list. However, the underworld would get to him before the law could. Somewhere in the evening of the 16th of March 2013, he is successfully taken out in the Komeniustrata in Amsterdam West. A suspect is apprehended, Soleiman L. Even though he was friends with Rida, he gave Rida a phone that allowed him to see where he was at all times. It has never been revealed if Soleiman did this in order of someone and who that could be. Group Gwinnett seems the most logical, of course. Interesting to note is that Soleiman L literally gave police the keys to solving who was responsible for Rida's passing. Soleiman snitched on himself by accidentally dropping his keys near the crime scene. The keys were later found by police and traced back to him through DNA samples. Rida only managed to see 21 years of age and was one of the youngest in the feud. Fast forward to a few months later, May 2013. There was a party called the Waterfront in Amsterdam. It is a crowded fancy party with over a thousand people attending. Suhail Lakir is amongst the guests with other people ranging from football players, criminals and Dutch music artists. Suhail was 26 at the time and deemed to be Ben Aouf's financial man and very important to Ben Aouf himself as a trustee. But besides men from Ben Aouf's camp, there were also plenty of men from Gwinnett's group at the party. I assume you already think that this was going to be a problem. Well, you are right. Among those members of Gwinnett's camp are his nephew, Dennis Mongan, and Suraili Ai. As if it was on purpose, their VIP tables are almost right across each other. After some words being exchanged between the tables, Dennis and Suhail are quickly engaged in a scuffle with each other and had to be separated by security guards. One of the security guards later said in court that Dennis smacked Suhail's phone out of his hand and stomped on it. After being separated, they all went back to their VIP sections. Dennis whispered something in Suraili's ear and moments later started yet another confrontation. As security guards intervened once again, Suraili calmly walked towards the distracted Suhail and strikes him multiple times. Suhail tries to flee behind a bar but it was already too late. Suhail is no more. Suraili is later apprehended outside the party and sentenced to 15 years in prison, where prosecutors initially demanded a 25-year sentence. This was a big hit for group Hussein and Ben Aouf, who immediately went to the drawing board to make a plan for a counter-attack. This counter-attack would be on Inkomar B, a 27-year-old and a friend of Gwinnett with a proven track record when it comes to his service for Gwinnett. It is the 17th of August 2013 when he is in the car near the Antwerpenbahn in Amsterdam. He was baited to come there and eventually gets boxed by two other cars. They strike and hit Inkomar. However, he manages to crawl out of the car and survived. It is unclear whether this was part of the rivalry between Group Gwinnett and Group Hussein and Ben Aouf, because Inkomar had plenty of enemies already. Inkomar was an extortionist, a profession you are bound to make enemies with. If anyone had an open tab with Gwinnett, 
he would be the one to come and collect it by all means necessary. Remember Chris Bauman, the traitor of Group Gwinnett? Well, he also managed to upset Group Hussein and Ben Aouf by being too open with the police about what happened in Antwerp. Chris Bauman was never made to be a criminal. It did not suit him and he just did not have the necessary skills. On the 24th of August, 2013, he was in jail in Harlem. Police suspected him to be part of the Crown Plaza Hotel incident. He was awaiting trial for his part. Chris could not cope with the stress. He knows both parties are furious with him, and he knows it is only a matter of time either in jail or outside of jail. Seeing what had happened thus far to some people involved in the feud, it was hard to imagine that he would not be facing the same type of repercussions. The pressure is too much, and the 36-year-old Chris decided to do it himself in jail with his bedsheets. The loss of Alexander Alecki Gillis is another prime example of that friendships in the underworld do not mean anything. Alexander himself was a familiar face of the police in Amsterdam, known for ATM robberies and breaking into offices and stores. Alexander used to be a good friend of Gwinnett, but the two got into an argument as Alexander was moving more towards Group Ben Aouf and even helped Group Ben Aouf with his hits on Gwinnett's life. Gwinnett, rightfully so, felt betrayed. And how could a long-time friend betray him for the opponents in this heated battle? Friends turn into enemies, and loyalty clearly meant nothing. Gwinnett had survived several hits on his life. Even though he had plenty of enemies, he just knew Alexander had something to do with it. He needed to get rid of him to have at least one less enemy, and so he did. Thursday the 20th of February 2014, the 30-year-old Alexander exits his girlfriend's house. He had absolutely no clue Gokhan C and Ilias K were waiting for him to walk towards his car. When he finally did, he stood absolutely no chance to the two guys. Ilias K was jailed for life and Gokhan C got 24 years and 8 months for his involvement. What helped to prosecute them was the Anetcom servers hack in Canada. This revealed that the two carrying out the job were in direct contact through their PGP phones with Gwinnett and texted him the job is done after it had happened. After further investigation, Mossad Amin Hosseini was later also found to be a suspect for this case, but before police could get to him, something else already happened. It's blow for blow, and this time it's the group of Gwinnett that delivers yet another blow, a rather tactical blow. Mohammed El Mayuri, who was a confidant of Ben Aouf, gets whacked outside Shisha Lounge Fairouz he just visited on the Kapoweg in Amsterdam on the 22nd of March 2014. Shisha Lounge Fairouz can be seen as Group Ben Aouf's headquarters. They would often meet there and run their business from there. Witnesses told police that a black Volkswagen Golf parked one and a half hours before the event took place in the Kapoweg. They laid low and patiently waited for the right opportunity. This came at around 2 o'clock at night. Within a matter of a minute, it took place and the car afterwards proceeded to flee the scene. It was later found burned and abandoned near the Slotterwerg. The reason for this was clear and a good move from Group Gwinnett. Ben Elf was arrested in June 2013 and Mohammed was about to get help from Ben Elf in court by testifying for him in regard to what happened to Najib Bubu in Antwerp. Group Gwinnett wanted to avoid this at all costs and took these drastic measures. Very unfortunate for Ben Aouf, this would make his case much more difficult. It made Ben Aouf furious. This episode showed that within exactly a year, many guys have fallen. Even more hits have been committed, some of which have failed. In between March 2013 and March 2014, five guys were removed from the playing field. This feud is brewing, but the initiators behind the feud remain safe thus far. Even though Ben Elf is now in jail, well, that is about to change in an unbelievable way. One of the groups is going to take a big hit, but was it done by the opposing group or from someone within? Lies and betrayal will play a key part in the next episode. See you in the next one.